High above the forest canopy, a single steel cable stretches from ridge to ridge, inviting the brave to surrender to gravity's pull. Once a lifeline for remote villagers and mountaineers, the zip line has evolved into one of the most sought-after adrenaline activities in the world. From the cloud forests of Costa Rica to the mountain ridges of the Philippines, thrill-seekers strap in and launch themselves into the open air, racing across breathtaking landscapes at exhilarating speeds. The sensation is unmatched, weightless, wild, and wildly addictive. But in the midst of that high-speed descent, a question quietly waits for its moment. How exactly do you stop at the end of a zip line? It's a question of physics, engineering, and trust. One will answer right here on History of Simple Things. Before we tackle the mechanics of the brakes themselves, it's important to appreciate what a zip line really is. At its core, a zip line is an inclined cable system that uses gravity to send a rider from a higher elevation to a lower one. The basic setup includes a cable, usually made of galvanized steel, mounted at a downward angle between two platforms. The rider wears a harness attached to a pulley that rolls smoothly down the line. Simple enough in concept, but a lot more complex in execution. Speeds can exceed 40, even 60 miles per hour on some of the longest and steepest lines. That's faster than many cars move through a city street. Given that stopping safely becomes not just important, it becomes essential. And that brings us to the true unsung hero of the zipline experience, the braking system. Because while launching off a platform might be exhilarating, crashing into the end at highway speeds is not. Zipline brakes are sophisticated, varied, and tailored to the specific design and demands of each course. Not all brakes are created equal. And depending on the speed, length, angle, and rider weight, the system has to adapt to bring people to a smooth and secure stop. There are several different types of braking systems in use today, each with its own strengths, mechanics, and scenarios where it shines. From manual brake pads to advanced passive magnetic systems, the world of zipline brakes is a blend of physics and engineering that quietly ensures every thrill ends in safety. Active braking systems often require a guide or operator to manually slow the rider using a brake block and rope. This system typically includes a block or stopper attached to the end of the line, with a trained guide pulling tension to engage the brake as the rider nears the platform. It's reliable when executed properly and gives guides more control, but it also relies heavily on human timing. A delay or distraction could lead to injury. For this reason, many parks supplement active systems with passive brakes, systems that operate automatically without rider or guide input. Passive braking systems are now the gold standard in high-speed, long-distance zip lines. The most common of these is the spring brake. As the rider approaches the end of the line, they hit a series of large springs that gradually compress, absorbing energy and bringing the rider to a controlled stop. These springs are mounted on the cable and recoil after each use, ready for the next rider. They're low maintenance, require no action from the user, and are remarkably effective for most commercial zip lines. Another increasingly popular and more technologically advanced system is the magnetic brake. Magnetic braking works without any physical contact. Instead, it uses magnets to create eddy currents, a phenomenon where the movement of the metal trolley through a magnetic field produces resistance. This smooth, frictionless deceleration is extremely reliable, unaffected by weather, and requires virtually no maintenance. As the metal zipline trolley enters the magnetic field at the end of the ride, it slows down in a controlled, predictable manner, ensuring a gentle stop. The elegance of magnetic braking lies in its lack of moving parts, making it less susceptible to mechanical failure. For longer, steeper, and high-speed zip lines, it's common to see hybrid systems, combining multiple types of brakes to create layered safety. For instance, a rider might first be slowed by a magnetic field, 
then encounter a spring compression system for the final stop, all while an operator monitors the ride from below. Redundancy is key in these environments. The forces at play can be massive, and a failure in a single component shouldn't spell disaster. Every braking system is tested repeatedly and subjected to rigorous maintenance schedules to ensure reliability. Behind every fun zip ride is a team of engineers and safety technicians making sure nothing is left to chance. But braking doesn't start at the end of the ride. It begins with careful planning during the course design. Factors like the angle of the descent, wind resistance, rider weight variability, and even the elasticity of the cable all influence how the brake will work. Engineers perform countless calculations and simulations before the first test ride ever takes place. Even the placement of the end platform is strategic, allowing riders to reach it with enough momentum to land, but not enough to make the impact dangerous. There's an entire invisible world of science and precision at work behind every seemingly effortless glide. Ultimately, zipline braking systems are more than just mechanical afterthoughts. They're the backbone of the experience. Riders rarely think about them, and perhaps that's the point. When a braking system does its job perfectly, the rider is free to focus on the view, the adrenaline, and the pure, soaring joy of the moment. Whether it's a jolt-free magnetic glide or the satisfying tension of a spring buffer, every stop is a silent victory for engineering. The safest thrill rides are the ones where the excitement ends precisely when and where it's supposed to. In conclusion, the next time you find yourself on a zip line, heart racing and the wind rushing past your ears, take a second to appreciate the technology that lies quietly at the finish line. Zip line brakes are not only marvels of design, they are guardians of the thrill. From gloves and ropes to springs and magnets, Every braking system tells a story of evolution, each chapter written to protect the rush without interrupting the ride. So, how do zipline brakes work? Through a marriage of physics, innovation, and safety-driven engineering, they slow us down with precision, stop us with grace, and allow us to chase the sky with confidence. In the world of adventure, they are the unseen hand that ensures we come back down to earth safely every time. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.